Hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. So, here we are guys, once again, ready to get started on uh, a new lesson. This is going to be basically the last for our class for this, uh, I mean for this week. And uh, yeah, so for tonight, we are going to be working on something that I remember was uh, not a homework, but an activity that I wanted to develop last Friday or no, it was last Thursday, actually. So if you guys um, have any memories about that, I am talking, of course, about a reading activity. I wanted us to get to read um, a few paragraphs that I had about different topics. So tonight we're basically going to be working on that. As I have said before, many teachers or many people, when we are learning a new language, we don't pay attention to the importance that reading plays in the, in the learning process. As normally, when we read, we have the chance to be exposed to new vocabulary. That's one of the things. Um, another thing that also helps a lot is um, the fluency. As when we're speaking, when we're like, you know, normally having a speech, we have to follow the regular process is something that um, basically comes with learning a language, which is the translation process. Like we're always, you know, translating and thinking in, in our native language and then speaking in the um, objective language. So it's something that can make us stop for a while, make us um, kind of like stop our audience. And uh, it's, as I said, something that comes with a language learning process. So when we do reading, we work better because we have already, you know, the idea of what we're going to be saying. And uh, we follow the simple words or the letters that we are reading at that time. Therefore, reading can help us achieve fluency. It can help us speak faster. It can help us um better our confidence with the language as well because when you read as i said before you already know what you're gonna say you already i mean you have the idea at least you have it right in front of you so there is no need for you to to be thinking too much you're just following the flow therefore confidence comes with those activities as you will have um well a faster pace and of course a faster pace means that we're going to feel better. You're going to start feeling like, you know, like you behave or that you belong in that language. And uh, it's something that can help us a lot. Um, last night, we were talking about it a little bit. We were talking about how some people like to read and all that. But um, yeah, tonight we are going to go deep into it. Um, so I hope you guys are ready for it. I hope you are um, also expecting, you know, to... Um, to learn from that experience as um, it's obviously going to be something that will help us in the process. All right. Before that, of course, we are going to be having a question for the night. Um, tonight is uh, the last class of the week. Therefore, the question is very predictable. It's very easy to know what the question is going to be. For tonight, I only want to know if you guys have any plans for this coming weekend. You know, it's always uh, a nice idea to get to hear from you. And also, um, well, to get to hear you practicing on how to say some activities or plans that you may happen to have this weekend. So um, I think we're going to be getting started with, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I had an idea. For tonight, we're going to be doing nomination. It's not going to be me saying who is going to come next. It's going to be you guys. So I hope you have access. Uh, we did that basically last last week. And uh, we had a good time at doing that, you know, selecting or giving you the control on who is going to be the next person on participating. So for tonight, that's basically the way it's going to go. If, um, you know, if you have any plans, answer um, to me and then ask the same question. Do you have any plans for this weekend to a classmate? So you're going to be practicing also asking questions. So the person that will start the chain for tonight, I think is going to be um, Janira Mendoza. So Janira, do you happen to have any plans for this coming weekend? Mm, not really. I, I, have, I have had a plan for, for tomorrow mm -hmm. at lunch. 
okay. because a friend um, <clears throat> who invited me to to eat sup of king mm -hmm. but um i really don't feel good and i i i am uh, doubting doubting mm -hmm. doubting doubting uh, about to to go because <clears throat> i feel so bad i'm flu mm -hmm. Uh -huh. okay. And I, 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 at this, at this moment, I have this plan, but mm -hmm. I don't know how to uh, get up tomorrow. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a little bit sad because, you know, sometimes uh, those plans can be, um, can be great, can turn out to be amazing. But yeah, sadly, you cannot go this time. So, yeah. It's sad, but you. I think, yeah, that you're right. You're gonna have to miss or skip, um, that activity this time. But well, hopefully you feel better soon, and uh, I hope that we can see you. You know, with a better, um, health for the next week. Okay, so now, Danita, who is going to be the next person participating in the activity? Um. <coughs> um. Maybe Alicia Guadalupe. Okay, Alicia. Um, can you please ask the question, Janita? Uh, any topic? Yes, oh, no, no, the, 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 the same thing, the same thing. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alicia, <clears throat> which plan do you have for tomorrow or or the on Sunday? Sunday. <laughs> Okay, Alicia. What want to do? What want to do in with the weekend? Who? Uh huh. Okay, great. Very specific. So, Alicia, what's your answer? Okay. Uh, my plans for this weekend are to go to San Salvador to celebrate my sister' birthday, and she will uh, she will be uh, turning. Uh, 40, 30, 40 um, mm -hmm. years old. Oh, cool. 40, 40 yeah, 40. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's nice. That's very nice. Cool. I hope you have a great time, you know, with your, I assume your family is going to be there as well. So I, I expect or I um, hope that you have a great time with your family at this um gathering. Esa palabra se las voy a enviar ahorita porque de hecho es una bastante importante y que no todo el tiempo se conoce. Gathering. Gathering eh, se utiliza cuando tenemos una reunión, podríamos decir, pero eh, no es necesariamente formal. Eh, cuando, por ejemplo, tenemos una reunión en el, tra en el trabajo, those are meetings, pero en el caso que tengamos una reunión familiar, we're going to use the word gathering. Also, when, um, for example, when we have like um, a party and we want to get together with friends, we can also call that a gather. You know, when we're gathering with friends, it's like when we are getting together, basically. Um, so it's less formal to use gathering than meeting because meeting is more uh, reserved for like um, professional environments. Okay, so. Uh, Alicia, who will be the next one answering the question? Um, let me see. Uh, uh, to Francisco Alberto. Okay. Can you please ask? que esté marcado no está disponible en este momento. Favor, llamar más tarde. So he's not there. <laughs> Can you please ask the question, uh, Alicia? Okay, uh, what are, are your plans for the weekend? Very nice. Uh, my principal plan is complete the platform, um, study, study, um, uh, come a domingo, so, uh, Monday, mm -hmm. study all day for, uh, me queda muy atrás, como se dice, profe? Perdón? Oh, I have been left behind. 
Ahorita se lo mando. I have, I have been, been left. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I bet. <laughs> o si no, I have fallen, porque es como su culpa, así que sería I have fallen uh, behind. I have, I have fallen, fallen behind. behind. Uh, in my uh, in the, in understand complete English uh, for my my work uh, uh, driving all day <laughs> okay well mm -hmm. yeah it's understandable you have to work a lot so of course you know you don't have like a lot of time to to complete the tasks but yeah. uh, and also when you get home you have to dedicate some time to your pets so it's like you know it's a little bit understandable Um, but yeah, I highly advise you, if you can, this weekend, complete the platform. Like, if you want to, you can completely, uh, you know, do it all, and then you're going to be free. You don't have to worry about the platform, at least. You only have to worry about the four, the last four classes. But uh, yeah, that would be, you know, my advice. So yeah, we have, I have fallen behind, which is when I have committed that fault, when I, it's my fault, when it's like, Um, the example would be like, I haven't done what was expected of me. So I fall, I fell behind. Now, when the teacher is the one that is probably going too fast and he's not, uh, explaining you what you want, uh, then you have been left behind when somebody else has done it to you. So that will be, I have been left behind. En ese caso, o sea, cuando yo me, 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 me quedé o me tracé porque pues, yo mismo no pude, sería um, I have fallen behind. Pero si es que me dejaron atrás, como que el profe, ¿verdad? Yo le pregunto algo, el profe no me hace caso. En, eso, en ese caso sería I have been left behind. Ok. So, lo que pasa es que me ha costado esta vez, profe. Por it's, eso me he atrasado. It's normal. It's ok. No problem. Ok, Francisco. Um, okay. Who is going to be the next one? Um, cualquier pregunta? No, it's uh, plans for the weekend for tonight. Oh, okay. What, yeah. okay. Um, Alejandro, what is the plan uh, the, uh, the weekend? Así, ¿verdad? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, Alejandro, what's your Alejandro plan? Quitaría, for this Good evening, guys. Thank you. Uh, honestly, um, I, I gonna, uh, no, I plan, uh, to begin since tomorrow uh, sleeping <laughs> I, I need to sleep uh, almost all the morning for tomorrow because I slept very uh, badly mm -hmm. uh, during the, the all week and then, then uh, maybe I have to to clean my house maybe yeah okay for so the simple for the plans. rest of the day yes simple plans nothing too crazy yeah. nothing too risky uh no. but okay only one thing it's that it's... maybe when we use the word since it's normally used to refer to activities that is started in the past so yeah. like when you see it on on tax or on 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 like um company dates you see since And that means that they have been in function since that time. Desde, ¿verdad? Desde, pero se refiere al pasado. If we talk about the future, if we talk about something that we're going to do, um, oh. we're going to be using starting. Sí. Starting. Iniciando mañana. Okay. O sea, si yo quiero okay. decir desde mañana, okay. sí. O sea, decir el desde mañana, eh, será mejor decir starting tomorrow. Okay. Porque es acerca del okay. futuro. Ajá. Cositas, okay. detalles, yo sé que, o sea, el sin suena okay. loco, porque okay. pues sí dice, ¿verdad? Desde, o sea, entonces sí, en español yeah. yo sé que desde se utiliza en ambos casos, pero eh, mm -hmm. para que sea como más apropiado, el sin es para cosas que iniciaron en el pasado y han estado sucediendo desde aquel momento. Um, puede ser algo que acaba de suceder, de hecho, o sea, por ejemplo, eh, digamos que un familiar se acaba de ir, vino otra visita que lo quería ver y yo le, y yo le digo, oh, no, he was here since 4 p.m., but he just left. Significa que, o sea, estaba ahí. También puede ser, o sea, si ustedes están todavía ahí, ¿verdad? O digamos, what took you so long? I have been since, I have been here since four. Entonces, eh, se refiere al pasado. He estado aquí desde las cuatro, ¿sí? Entonces, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Se utiliza since. Pero cuando es acerca del futuro, algo que yo digo, eh, voy a comer sano desde mañana. Entonces, yo debería decir starting tomorrow, ¿sí? Iniciando mañana sería como lo más... 
eh, para entenderlo en español, así, ¿verdad? Funcionaría, iniciando mañana o a partir de mañana. So, yeah. Very good. Now, uh, Alejandro, what is going to, I mean, who is going to be the next person on participating tonight? Okay, maybe um, uh, Noemi? No, okay. Noemi oh. is, yes. Yeah, Noemi is okay. available to participate. So, okay. all right, Noemi, and what is your question? I mean, Noemi, what are your plans for the weekend? Very good. Uh, Very good. My plan the last weekend is going to the Texas Tepeque to visit at my aunt at Celebrity, the Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. My mother already passed away. Oh, okay. So, yeah, mm. it's nice, you know, um, continue celebrating with uh, other members of the family when you can. So nice, very nice. I hope you have a great time with your family there when you go to uh, Texas, uh, Texas, Texas Tepeque. Tepeque. Yeah, there yes. we go. Is that in San Vicente? Or where is what? it? Is it in Cuscatlán or San Vicente? No, Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Mm, okay, don't know too much. I don't know too much about the uh, central and, and western western zones. So yeah, um, blame on me. Santa Ana, Texas, Metapan, Santa Ana, Salchuapa, Guatepeque, Santa oh. Ana. Oh, okay, great. Uh -huh. All right, then, yes. uh, yeah, hope you got you you have a great time, you know, with uh, your aunt and the rest of the family that you can meet there, and that the celebration goes um amazingly. So yeah. Um, okay. now Noemi, who is going to be the next person on participating tonight? Um, pero a ver, Marisa. Okay, great. So, ask Marisa. the question, please. Marisa. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, what's playing for the last weekend, Marisa? For tomorrow. <laughs> Um, um, my plan for the weekend is stay my home, <laughs> stay my house, uh, because uh, I need to rest a little. Okay. Um, be, this this um, week has been very hard, mm -hmm. and my my job, and I need to rest. That's then in the in the morning <laughs> uh, after i think uh, the to visit the person who is sick oh okay all Only right that. great very good no that's nice nice yeah sometimes you know we need to rest we need to take some time off just to lay down on a hammock or maybe lay down in bed and just take you know some fresh air just breathe in and sometimes if it's possible if the heat allows you to uh get to sleep a little because yeah i mean that's basically the best way that the body has for recovering so hopefully it goes it goes uh smoothly um okay nice so maritza who is going to be the person that you want to ask the question to and please ask the um, question. Daisy? All right. Please yes. ask the question for Daisy. Okay, Daisy, hello. Daisy. Hello, good evening. <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, Daisy, what are your plans for next weekend? Okay, my plans for this weekend are only to study hard um, for exams because I have to retake a final accounting text. Oh, okay. Only well. study hard. 
Yeah, sometimes when we're studying, we have to do that because it's part of the process. We have to study. Uh, and uh, well, that's, you know, hopefully this time you're going to nail the test because um, it has happened. It happens all the time when you're studying uh, or when you're, you know, trying to achieve a degree that uh, some exams, some tests are just too much or too tricky and we get to fail. So, yeah. Hopefully this time, Daisy, you're going to nail it and you're going to have, uh, you're going to do, you know, um, great on the test. All right. So, okay. Daisy, uh, can we please have one last person participating? Uh, it's not going to be Anna this time around because she already said that she is um, in a family emergency. So we're not going to be taking her. Um, so anyone else from the ones that have not participated to be the last one? We have... Oh, no, wait, we only have Erivin uh, and Giselle. So I think we're all going to participate. So, yeah, Erivin or Giselle. Daisy, you pick. Hello? Yeah. Jose Erivin. Okay. Go ahead and ask the question, okay. please. My question is, what are your plans for this week? Already, so arriving. What are your plans? Hi, everybody. Hey there. Good evening. Evening. Well, my plans are simple. Uh, uh, well, I will. Well, me and my friends will get together, mm -hmm. and we will um go. We will go to eat, and after that. I will get back home to rest as much as I can. And that's it. I don't have too many plans for this weekend. That's nice. You know, also spending time with friends is, of course, going to be something great to have. So, yeah, of course, that's, you know, great. So hopefully you get to spend um, some great hours with your friends and also you enjoy um, the place where you guys go to eat. And uh, yeah, I hope it's an amazing time with friends. All right. So um, we're going to have uh, the last person for tonight, and it's going to be Giselle. So Erivin, please go ahead and ask her the question. Hello, G Hello Giselle. Good evening. Hello there, Giselle. This is like a session of spiritism. Hello, <laughs> yeah. Giselle. Are you are there? You there? If, you are, if you are, if you are there, <laughs> say please something. Knock three times. Yeah, make the nail, make a nail sound. Yeah, well, that happens. Well, uh, maybe Giselle is not available right now, so we're gonna move into the. Um, into the activity for tonight. So I don't know if you guys had any idea about it because I know it's not something that we, um, you know, that we care a lot about because there is no reason for us to do so. Um, uh, but today it's the celebration of Cinco de Mayo. That's something that, um, in the U.S. is like a like a very big thing. You know, they like to celebrate. Um, Cinco de Mayo, and um, yeah, I only know from about, sorry, about this activity or about this celebration because one time I almost participated in the in the activity, but it's just, you know, something kind of weird that uh, um, Mexicans and Americans alike, uh, they like to celebrate. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the first reading. As I said, we have, oh, sorry, we have different readings for tonight. We're going to be um, going through them. But right now, what I want to, to do or what I want us to, to practice is Cinco de Mayo, because I want us to know about, um, well, about this celebration. So there is no need for you to say 5th of uh, May, uh, not necessarily only when we get to these portions over here, but when you refer to the celebration itself, um, it's basically always going to be Cinco de Mayo. Like, there's no need for you to say anything different. Um, so, yeah, 
it of course the the, the difference is going to be that you have to pronounce it like if you were um an american you know because of the pronunciation but apart from that there's no other change so this celebration cinco de mayo what's it about well the reading says cinco de mayo is a huge celebration all around the united states it is celebrated on the 5th of may the festival is meant to honor the Mexican culture and heritage. Many people believe that it is the Mexican Independence Day, um, just like the independence of the United States. However, that is a complete misconception regarding this day. Um, the Cinco de Mayo is not the Mexican Independence Day. It is the day that celebrates the victory of the Army of Mexico. It is the day when the French were defeated by the Mexican army in the year 1862, during the Battle of Puebla. Although the victory of the battle did not let the Mexicans win the war, uh, let, sorry, the Mexicans win the war, it still holds huge significance. This is because the day of the Battle of Puebla was turned into uh, a public holiday by the president of Mexico, Benito Juarez, on the 9th of May, 1965, 62. However, it is no longer a public holiday in Mexico in the current times. Muy bien. El 5 de mayo, si se los explico así rápido, o sea, esto es lo que, lo que, lo que dice aquí la lectura, ¿verdad? Es una cosa. Por otro lado, si vamos a hablar acerca de cultura actual, el 5 de mayo es una fecha que se celebra básicamente, o sea, si lo vamos a hacer así directo, como adultos, ¿verdad? Eh... Se celebra porque los americanos no tienen otra excusa para tomar, ¿sí? O sea, y eso me lo dijeron a mí en el tiempo que estoy ahí directamente y me dijeron eso. O sea, el alcohol, pues, es gran parte de la cultura en Estados Unidos. Entonces, y básicamente es eso. Después del Día de San Patricio, que muy pocas personas, ¿verdad?, en el resto del mundo celebran o celebramos, eh, no hay nada más en el medio que se pueda celebrar hasta el Día de la Independencia, entonces decidieron que, o sea, iban a tomar esta celebración que era mexicana, ¿sí? Una celebración mexicana, la tomaron como propia. Eh, la idea en sí fue decir, ¿verdad?, que eh, pues a raíz de la victoria en Puebla tuvieron la oportunidad, el, el ejército estadounidense, de, pues, defenderse, ¿verdad? Y tener mayor confianza para enfrentar al el ejército de Napoleón. Entonces, si a raíz de esa victoria, ellos, pues, tuvieron al final la oportunidad de, pues, de librarse de, de las cadenas que Francia, hasta cierto punto, pudo haber impuesto sobre Estados Unidos. Eso es la, lo que venden hasta cierto punto también eh, de forma oficial. Pero, como les digo, o sea, a mí me contaron ya la versión más actualizada y es como que, o sea, no, no hay otra, otro motivo, otra mentira para poder eh, tomar. Entonces, eligieron el 5 de mayo y dijeron, pues, esta fecha, ¿verdad? Esta, esta celebración está interesante. So, let's make it a drinkable celebration. Y se los digo porque, pues, hace alrededor de cinco años yo estuve bastante cerca de esta celebración. Estaba en California en ese entonces. Eh, era por el 4 de mayo, el día que yo estuve por ahí paseando, y el 5, pues sucedió, ¿verdad?, que se iba a celebrar esto, eh, y pues era un desorden completo, yo solo salí um, a la tienda, básicamente, pero, o sea, el tráfico ahí en California normalmente es horrible, ese día estaba peor de lo normal, y pues es básicamente porque las personas están eh, tratando de hacer fiestas de, para celebrar o conmemorar el 5 de mayo. Pero ya no es necesariamente una celebración que es solo por la victoria, ¿verdad? Sino que es más ya una excusa, básicamente. So, yeah. But still, it is something interesting. It is a celebration. It is still a celebration. Um, in the U.S., there are many schools that still celebrate Cinco de Mayo. It's not that it's only about the drinking, but I say that for adults, for grown-ups, it's mostly about that. Okay, for grown-ups, it's not necessarily about the celebration anymore. It's for the drinking, basically. So, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I saw that um, Alejandro, you had your hand up. Uh, did you have any question? Hello, Alejandro. Did you did you have a question? Yes, I was asked uh, 
Yeah. Yes, teacher, I, I, I have a question about the, what's the meaning of, oh, no. When is the some but to stay? But I search in oh in, in internet and and I saw the, March seventeenth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, March seventeenth. So yes, it's it's, yes. it's just an excuse, yes. you know. It's as I said, it's for for um, for Americans, yeah. it's just an ex an excuse, um, to get to drink, and uh, yeah, it's like you know, it's right in the middle between <laughs> St. Patrick's and 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 Independence Day. So why not? <laughs> So yeah, on, Ch on Chicago, in Chicago is very popular this celebration, right? The St. Patrick's Day, yes, it's very yes. popular. They sell yeah. green beer in a, in, a, <laughs> in a river. I don't remember what's the name of the river, but I, I know this river. And and someone uh, told me about the celebration of, of St. Patrick's Day. Uh, this person told me this is the river when uh, paint uh, green it's and green. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This, nah. but I didn't remember when. When was the the, the celebration? Mm -hmm. But I I just read right now. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, I am trying to find. Da, 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 da. Let's see. It's Columbus Drive. No, no, that's not the. Yeah, it's March seventeenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's March seventeenth. Can you swim? No, I cannot find. I just know. I, 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 I just know that this river desemboca. I don't know how can I say this word. Um, uh, desemboca in the Michigan Lake. Mm -hmm. In yes. Michigan Lake. The, yes. The, this is the name of, of, of this lake, but I don't remember the well, name of the river. It's the Chicago River, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, at least the name that I have found. Uh, it's Chicago River. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So yeah. And um uh, uh when we talk about the sembocar, we can use the word uh falls into. Falls into or um leads. Because in English they don't really have, you know, like a a word for everything. Um so Least. yeah, leads can be like a like a word we can use. Leads to and you mentioned then the the, the Michigan lake. So yeah. Okay. okay. Now the the activity tonight, what we're going to be doing is that um one of you guys is going to be reading it. Sí, uno de ustedes. Eh, bueno, vamos a tratar de que todos participemos, verdad, en las diferentes lecturas. Eh, primero quiero que al menos dos hagamos la lectura del 5 de mayo para luego mostrarles el resto, las demás lecturas y de ahí en adelante ustedes van a poder elegir, verdad, con cuál les gustaría practicar. La idea principal es que ustedes eh, lo hagan de forma voluntaria. Sí, porque la, la, el objetivo pues es que tengamos la práctica de lectura, ¿verdad? No necesariamente que yo tenga que estarle seleccionando eh, para que lo puedan leer. Esta voy a leerla una vez más, de una forma un poco más lenta, para que tengamos eh, la oportunidad de escuchar tal vez la pronunciación de alguna palabra que sea complicada. Y luego esperaría, ¿verdad? Tener eh, ya los voluntarios. Eh, en este momento serían dos para poder leer esta este párrafo y luego pasaríamos a los demás que tengo verdad para pues eh, a continuación ustedes ya tendrían la oportunidad de elegir o sea y dicen ah me gusta más este tema me gusta más este otro tema okay so here we go again Cinco de Mayo is a huge celebration all around the United States it is celebrated on the 5th of May the festival is meant to honor the Mexican culture and heritage many people believe that it is the Mexican Independence Day just like the independence of the United States. However, that is a complete misconception regarding this day. Cinco de Mayo is not the Mexican Independence Day. It is the day that celebrates the victory of the Army of Mexico. It is the day when the French were defeated by the Mexican Army in the year 1862, during the Battle of Puebla. Although the victory of the battle did not let the Mexicans win the war, it still holds a huge significance. This is because the day of the Battle of Puebla was turned into a public holiday by the President of Mexico, Benito Juarez, on the 9th of May, 1862. However, it is no longer a public holiday in Mexico in the current times. Okay, so I have my first volunteer. It is going to be Eraivin. So Eraivin, you may start the reading as soon as you feel ready. 
Ok. Eh, 5 de mayo is a huge it's a huge celebration of all around the United States. It is celebrated on the 5th of May. The festival is meant to honor the Mexican culture and heritage. Many people believe that it is the Mexican Independence Day, just like the Independence Day, Independence of the United States. Mm -hmm. However, that's that is a complete misconception regarding this day. The Cinco de Mayo is not the Mexican Independence Day. It is the day that celebrates the victory of the Army of Mexico. It is the day when the French were defeated by Mexican Army in the year 1862 during the Battle of Puebla. All right. Continue on. Okay. Although the victory of the battle did not let the Mexican win the war, it's, it still holds huge significance. This is because the day of the Battle of Puebla was turned into a public holiday by the president of Mexico, Benito Juarez. On the 9th of May, 1862. However, it is not longer a public holiday in Mexico in the current times. Already. Very nice. Very, very good. Muy bien. Me fijé en un detalle. Hay un error en una palabra en esta lectura. Sí. Eh, lo noté desde la primera vez y me quedé como, hmm, ¿será? ¿Será que yo me equivoqué o será que de verdad es un error? Así que vaya, yo tengo una costumbre de vez en cuando que me gusta, pues, eh, regalarles algo, ¿verdad? Por su, por su trabajo. Eh, esta noche les doy un dólar de recarga a quien quiera que sea que encuentre esa palabra. Sí, es una palabra que está mal. Y, o sea, puede ser alguien que haya participado, alguien que no haya participado. Si ustedes se fijan y me dicen, ah, mire, esa es la palabra, yo les, eh, les regalo ese dólar de recarga. Así que, um, si quieren, ¿verdad? Pues, Obviamente, esperar que termine también el compañero que está participando y ahí pueden agregar su comentario. En este momento, Alejandro, si sí podía. No sé si usted tiene idea o no. Ah, ok. Bueno, entonces, eh, era Ivan, usted que acaba de leer. No sé si sintió que alguna palabra estuviese fuera de lugar. No, ya, yeah, teacher. Ok. All right. So, I think we had someone else. Teníamos a alguien. Ah, oh, Maritza. So, Maritza, you had your hand up first. So, um, you can go ahead and do the reading as soon as you feel ready. So you may start now, Maritza. No le quiere agarrar. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cinco de Mayo is a H celebration all around the United States. It is celebrated on the 5th of May The festival is meant to honor the Mexican cultures and heritage. Many people believe that it is the Mexican Independence Day, just like the independence of the United States. However, that is complete misconception regarding this day. The Cinco de Mayo is not the Mexican Independence Day. It is the day that celebrates the victory of the arms of Mexico. It is the day when the French were defeated by the Mexican arms in the years 1862 during the Battle of Puebla. Okay. Continue on, all, please. Also, the victory, the victory Of the battle did not let the Mexican win the war. It still holds huge significance. This is because the date of the battle of Puebla was turned into a public holiday by the president of Mexico, Benito Juarez, on the 9th of May. Mm -hmm. 80 62. However, 
it is not longer a public holiday in Mexico in the current times. All right, very good. Very, very nice. Uh, did you find the word by any chance? Encontró la palabra o no? <laughs> no. No? Bueno, no, that's okay. That's okay. Noemi, tell me, did you want to participate in the reading? Uh, the la palabra mm -hmm. cinco. Huh? No es five. Sorry? Cinco. Cinco. No, no dice five. Oh, no, no, no. Les dije que no. esta es como es una celebración, se dice en español. O sea, se respeta, ¿verdad?, el idioma de origen. Entonces ah, decimos 5 okay. de mayo. Sí, en ese caso sí, no ah, hay okay. problema con ella. 5 uh -huh. de palabra. mayo. No, 5 okay. de mayo is nice. Yeah, so that's not the word. Okay. okay. So, uh, now we're going to go into another reading. Sí, vamos a ver otra, otra, otra lectura, otro de los temas que tengo para ustedes. Y creo que vamos a enfocarnos más en este, que es un poco más corto. Sí, no vamos a ver tanto los que son largos hoy, sino que más estos que son un poco más cortos. So, uh, we have this one about the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is a country in Northern Europe. It is actually a country made up of four different countries. England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. This is why the full name of the United Kingdom is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The United Kingdom has been a very important country in the world since the um, 1600s. It was especially powerful in the 19th and 20th centuries when it had colonies around the world. Colonies are countries that are ruled by another country. When the United Kingdom was at its largest, it ruled one-fifth of the world's population. Today, the United Kingdom does not have many colonies. It is, however, still a very influential country in the world. Um, throughout history, the people of the United Kingdom have been leaders in many areas. They have made important contributions to literature, philosophy, science, and math. A contribution is something you give, usually ideas or money. Perhaps the most important area of contribution was to the Industrial Revolution. Muy bien, tenemos esa y luego tenemos otra. Que vamos a estar con tres lecturas nada más esta noche que son las más, eh, las más sencillas. En este caso, la otra sería esta. Sí, Magallanes Sales. Magallanes Cells, porque la otra es muy larga. Déjenme solo acomodar aquí para tener las tres juntas, porque si no, se nos hace una sola regazón. So, here we go. Uh, in the case of uh, Magallanes Cells, uh, we should read it as following. Let me see. Oh, sorry. Um, where did you go? Here you are. All right, so this reading should go as following. In the 16th century, an age of great marine and terrestrial exploration, um, Ferdinand Mag Magallan led the first expedition to sail around the world. As a young Portuguese noble, he served the king of Portugal, but he became involved in the um, quagmire of political intrigue at court and lost the king's favor. After he was dismissed from service by the King of Portugal, he offered to serve the future Emperor Charles V of Spain. A papal decree of um, 1493 had assigned all land in the New World west of 50 degrees W longitude to Spain and all the land east of that line to Portugal. Magallan offered to prove that the East Indies fell under Spanish authority. On September 20th, 1519, Magellan set sail that, uh, the, oh, sorry, from Spain with five ships. More than a year later, one of these ships was exploring the topography of South America in search of a water route across the continent. This ship sank, but the remaining four ships Search along the southern peninsula of South America. Finally, they found the passage they sought near 50 degrees as latitude. Magellan named this passage the Strait of All Saints. 
but today it is known as the Strait of Magallan. Okay, so from now on, you guys get to pick. Um, I think that the uh, okay before the French before the French. Uh, not necessarily. Very good idea, but not necessarily, Alejandro. Keep looking, keep looking. Muy bien, ahora sí, vamos a ver, de forma voluntaria, quienes quisieran continuar con la práctica de lectura, y ahora sí tienen opción a elegir cuál de las tres lecturas quieren uh, practicar. Sí, puede ser la de um, Inglaterra, o Great Britain, Magallan, o Cinco de Mayo. Ok, Noemi, which one do you pick? The first. Uh, Cinco de Mayo, then. Cinco de Mayo. Ok. Yeah. There you go. Vamos a buscar ese dólar de recarga. <laughs> okay. Cinco de Mayo is a whole celebration around the United States. It is celebrated on the 5th of, of, of May. The festival is meant to, to honor the Mexican culture and her heritage. Many people believe that if the Mexican independence They just like the independence of the United States. However, that is complete misconception regarding this day. The Cinco de Mayo is not the Mexican Independence Day. It is the day that celebrates the victory of the Army of Mexico. Mexico. It is the day when the French were defended by the Mexican Army in the years Uh, 16, 1862. There you go. During the the Battle of Puebla, mm -hmm. although the victory of the battle did not leave the Mexican with the war, it still holds hope significant. This is because the day of the Battle of Puebla was turned into a public holiday by the president of Mexico, Benito Juarez. In the 8th of May, uh, 16, 1862. 1862. Perdón que me tapa la mano. That's okay. 62. Whatever is, it is no longer a public holiday in Mexico in the current time. All right. Very good. That is nice. Very, very nice. Thank okay. You. Any idea now where the word can be? ¿Alguna idea de cuál puede ser la palabra? No. Seems like no. Okay. Anyone else? ¿Algún okay. otro? Sorry? Oh, okay. ¿Algún otro voluntario que quiera eh, practicar la lectura en este momento? ¿Cualquiera de los tres párrafos? No se me pongan igual que ayer que no querían enviar los ejemplos. Come on. It's only reading, people. Remember, the idea is that when we read, we have the chance to be more fluent, to um, follow our own pace, and we don't have to be thinking too much of what we're going to say. We're only going to be, uh, you know, following the thought and following the lines of the reading. So, any other volunteer? Or quieren que entonces los llame yo y les diga que leer? No, tampoco va. Alejandro, teacher, dice ahí. Sí, Alejandro tiene ganas. Okay, Alejandro, which one would you like to read? Que a ratos lo veo que está todo inquieto. Creo que se fue ahorita, fíjense. No sé, a mí no a mí me aparece con la cámara apagada. Oh, no, there you are. Ok, Alejandro. ¿Para cuál, ¿A cuál se le mide, Alejandro? Um, England, teacher, please. Ok. Let's see. Here we go. There you have it. <laughs> It's too long, but no problem. Okay. Um, the, the United Kingdom is a country in Northern Europe. It is actually a country made, made up of four different countries, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. This is why the full name of the United Kingdom is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Ireland. The United Kingdom has been a very important country in the world since the 16th 
uh, it was especially powerful in the 19th and 20th centuries when it had colonies around the world. Colonies are countries that are ruled by another country. When the United Kingdom was at its largest, it ruled one fifth of the world's population. Today, the United Kingdom does not have many colonies. It is, however, still a very influential country in the world. Throughout history, the people of the United Kingdom have been leaders in many areas. They have made important contributions to lit literature, philosophy, science, and math. A contribution is something you give usually ideas or money. Perhaps the most important area of contribution was to the Industrial Revolution. Very good. That was nice. Thank very, you. very well done. Already then. Um, so, nice, nice, nice. Let's see, uh, Janira, which one would you like to read? Uh, the same. Okay. So you can start it as soon as you feel ready. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is a country in Northern Europe. It is actually a country made up of four different countries, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. This is why the full name of the United Kingdom is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The United Kingdom has been a very important country in the world since the um, 1600s. Please? 1600s. 1600s. It was especially powerful in the 19th and 20th centuries when it had colonies around the world. Colonies are countries that are ruled by another country. When the United Kingdom was at its largest, it ruled one fifth of the world's population. <clears throat> Today, the United Kingdom doesn't not have any, how many colonies. It is, however, still a very influential country in the world. Throughout the story, the people of the United Kingdom have been leaders in many ideas. Um, I don't know. No, Leo. Leaders in many Metapa. areas. Uh, Me, okay. Metapa, la... Un momento. Okay, tal Allá. vez así. Sí, sí, sí. Puede subir o bajar la foto. Thank you. Um, however, still a very influential country in the world. Through our story, the people of the United Kingdom have been leaders in many areas. They have many, they they have made important contribution to literature, philosophy, science, and math. A contribution is something you give, usually ideas or money. Perhaps the most important area, area of contribution was to the Industrial Revolution. Very Only good. That. Nice, nice, nice. Very well done. Very good job. Okay, so uh, there is something uh, that I didn't tell you before. Saben que el grupo recién que terminé uh, cuando inicié con ustedes, eh, para ellos desarrollé una actividad, pero pues se los anuncié desde el principio, ¿verdad? Casi siempre me gusta tener al menos una actividad al final en la última clase que sea, pues, interesante. Um, me gusta bastante apoyar la lectura porque casi en todos los grupos que he tenido he tratado de al menos un párrafo ponerlos a leer, porque es algo que no se practica muy a menudo. Y pues cuando estamos aprendiendo un idioma, como les dije al principio, es importante porque a través de esto, um, o el desarrollo de esta habilidad, pues tenemos ¿verdad? acceso a mayor confianza, mayor fluidez y más vocabulario. Entonces yo la verdad veo muchas ventajas en la lectura. Pero pues también eh, me gusta a veces divertirme con lo que hago y ese día les propuse, ¿verdad? Desde el principio que ellos fuesen practicando lectura, o sea, lo más que pudieran, para que en el último día ellos eran un grupo de intermedio. Ustedes ya son preavanzados y estaban varios escalones abajo todavía. Entonces, el, los párrafos que ellos leyeron eran también más pequeñitos, ¿verdad? Pero que en el último día íbamos a tener eh, una competencia, ¿sí? O sea, una competencia y que íbamos a tener un párrafo nada más 
que todos lo tenían que leer. O oh, no, eran dos párrafos, ya me acordé. Fueron dos párrafos porque um, hubieron dos ganadoras. El detalle es que ellos iban a tener la oportunidad de leerlo. Sí, cada uno iba a tener una chance. Pero tenían que hacerlo lo más rápido que pudieran. Pronunciaciones equivocadas, el trabarse mucho en algo les iba a causar que, um, pues que perdieran segundos, ¿verdad? Yo estaba con mi teléfono tomando el tiempo de cada uno para pues, ir regulando eh, eso. Entonces, les digo, fue bastante sorprendente desde mi lado, eh, porque hubo dos chicas que toda la noche estuvieron, o sea, todo el rato estuvieron eh, cabeza a cabeza, y, o sea, la competencia estuvo bastante, bastante reñida. Al final resultó que... La misma chica en realidad ganó ambos, ambos párrafos, pero había otra, pues como les digo, que se le, se le, le plantaba eh, competencia, ¿verdad? Ellas hacían cerca de 28 segundos en leer el párrafo, o sea, era como que, bueno, me ganaron a mí incluso, o sea, yo, yo lo leí y era como que traté de hacerlo lo más rápido posible, en uno me ganaron, en el otro no, pero o sea, me ganaron a mí, yo me quedé como, ok, that's quick, o sea, leían bastante, bastante rápido. Entonces, al final, lo que la chica que ganó ambos, ambos, ambas competencias decidió fue repartir, ¿verdad?, El, la ganancia entre las dos, o sea, porque ella dijo que sentía que era justo que la otra chica también ganara algo, porque habían hecho un buen trabajo ambas, pero, o sea, fue algo bastante interesante. Se los comento porque, pues, estoy pensando en qué se me llega a ocurrir hacer con ustedes en la última clase, um, porque, pues, sí, es... Es interesante también, o es importante que haya eh, algo de diversión. Si no, pues ya veremos. Tal vez eh, se trate de idioms, porque sé que les dije el otro día, ¿verdad? Que eso puede ser un tema que lleguemos a tocar en la última clase, porque es algo bien importante que, pues, eh, que lleguen a aprender ustedes acerca de eso. Pero bueno, vamos a ver. Tengo chance todavía para una persona más, así que recuerden, todavía está por ahí eh, en juego lo que les dije, o sea, está el dólar de recarga en el aire, ¿sí? Aquí está la lectura del 5 de mayo, si encuentran la palabra que está mal, ustedes me dejan saber cuál es y pues de verdad, de inmediato se va, un dólar. Teacher, uh -huh. could be the word hold, holds, huge significance. Wait, It's uh, the, holds, huge significance, yeah. In the last paragraph, the first Huge, hold, yeah. huge uh -huh. significance. You are very close, but it's not that one. Okay. It still holds huge significance. Yeah, you are very close, but it's not that one. Okay. Okay. Um, so, who would like to do the reading, the last reading of the night? ¿A quién le gustaría ser el último en participar en la lectura hoy? Let's see. Sing a song. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice as well. You know, as the last activity of the... um. Of the curse to sing a song. We'll see. We'll see. The problem is that uh, with music, we have a lot of issues because we will have to do it a cappella because uh, we cannot be using, um, you know, music here. Bueno, creo que ya no alcanza el tiempo en sí para hacer una lectura, una lectura más. Así que voy a uh, simplemente detallar algunas de las palabras que tenemos acá, ¿verdad? Um, por ejemplo, la palabra heritage. Sí, una palabra común, bastante común en realidad en cualquier... Eh, tema que se refiera a historia, porque pues esto se refiere, ¿verdad?, al legado, ¿sí?, de, 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 de una cultura, o sea, cultura y el legado, heritage, la herencia, básicamente. También se puede utilizar para hablar acerca de la herencia cuando ustedes, o sea, discuten a quién le va a quedar el terreno. It can also be um, used this word, heritage. Um, then, I think we have misconception, ¿sí? Misconception es básicamente una palabra que se usa para referirnos a un error, sí, una a misconception. Um, so yeah, here the misconception is that muchas personas creen que el 5 de mayo es el día de la independencia mexicano o um, siguen creyendo eso, ya que pues en Estados Unidos es el 4 de julio, así que para ellos esa es la celebración que se lleva a cabo, cuando en realidad sabemos que no, verdad, que, el, que la independencia mexicana se celebra pues casi al mismo tiempo que la nuestra. Entonces es diferente. So yeah, that is a misconception. Es un error. Um, so yeah. Then uh, I think defeated. Probably the word defeated. Eso se refiere a eh, vencer. Sí, defeated. Only defeat. También, ¿verdad? Se refiere a vencer. So yeah. Ahora, les voy a decir cuál era la palabra que tenían que buscar. 
era esta. Si se fijaron, durante todo el rato que yo estaba acá, yo señalaba por aquí. Sí. Esto a mí me hace notar que este párrafo, o sea, lo, desde que lo leí la primera vez, yo me quedé con la duda y es como que, pero no quise cambiarlo porque yo dije, no vaya a ser que, que me equivoque yo. Pero mientras más lo leí, más me di cuenta de que sí, que estaba equivocada y que era, this is why. Sí, es que because se utiliza para explicar el motivo de algo. En cambio, why es, digamos, se puede utilizar también en frases como para dar una explicación eh, acerca del porqué de algo. Sí, o sea, yo, por ejemplo, yo puedo decir, I did that because um, I was hungry. Entonces, es una motivación eh, simplemente personal. En cambio, el, utilizamos el why cuando estamos explicando algo que viene de la historia principalmente, o sea, algo que se hizo a raíz de otra cosa. Entonces, eh, por, la, por el significado que tiene esa batalla, es el motivo por el cual se celebra, ¿verdad? O se inició a celebrar el 5 de mayo y luego se quedó incluso como un, uh, um, un día festivo. Entonces, no sería this is because, sino this is why um, the day of the Battle of Puebla was turned into a public holiday. Entonces, no sería because, sino que why. This is why. Ese es el motivo. So, yeah. Well, um, time flew by tonight, and it's basically over. So, the class is done. Um, I will be seeing you guys on Monday. Remember, next week, we're going to have another of these crazy weeks. We're going to have classes on Monday, Tuesday, uh, third, Thursday, and Friday. So, hope you guys are ready for that. We're going to be closing um, our classes with next week. So, I hope you guys are going to be here next Monday. Hope you also have an amazing weekend. Take care out there. Be good and have a really good night. See you on the next one. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.